public education. Can everybody hear me okay? Cool. It's great to see you all. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a history of the Occupy movement thus far. This is living history. We're living it right now. Um, but uh, for those of you that are just getting involved, for those of you that have heard about it on the news or on, wet, on the web, um, starting in mid-September, Occupy Wall Street began. And since then, it has spread to, last time I checked, 2,300 cities worldwide. Woo! That's thousands and thousands and thousands, probably millions of people around the world who are standing up saying, we have had enough of corruption in our government. We've had enough um, corporate influence in our government. We want real democracy for all the people. So Occupy Phoenix began on October 15th. We had a few thousand people out here in Cesar Chavez Plaza, and we've been here 24-7 since. We are small but mighty. Um, we have a lot of support on the internet and um, out there, and now the challenge is to get them all out here. But I'm really glad to see you guys here today. This is a really important event, and uh, I'm going to hand this off to Anna, who's going to talk about uh, what we're doing today. Woo! Yeah! Good morning, everyone! Woo! Good afternoon! Good afternoon, yes. Yeah. Welcome to all of our educators who are here. I know you're busy and I appreciate you taking the time to come here today. Let's have a round of applause for educators! Woo! Welcome to students who are here. I know it's hard for you to give up a Saturday. A cheer for students! Woo! Welcome to parents who are here. You care about your children's education and are your only, their only advocate. Welcome parents! Welcome to concerned citizens who are here to keep our public education strong. You get that providing good education for all of us affects the future of our country. Public education is for the 99% and you are the 99%. Occupy Education as a part of Occupy Phoenix began with two educators who want to hold our government accountable for funding and improving our educational system. Please go to OccupyPhoenix.org and there will be a link to Occupy Education Today. If not, go directly to OccupyEducationToday.com. Here at Occupy Phoenix, we are planning to dedicate the month to education. Check out the OccupyPhoenix.org for calendars and calendars. We are the 99%. We have been left out of the process and we understand what is going on. Privatization is trying to take over our schools using our tax dollars. At which point we will have to pay for education. Don't allow it. Join the 99%. So today we've organized a series of breakout groups. The first breakout group, uh, Higher Education Secrets for the 99%, is with Chelsea Starr. Chelsea, will you raise your hand? Next one is with Connie Leach. Connie, raise your hand. This one is What Happens When Public Education Becomes a Business. So if you're interested in the privatization of our public schools, go with Connie. What's money got to do with it? How income affects educational opportunities? That's with me, Anna, and Tara. Marsha will also be presenting with me on communication acquisition. We also have Why the Arts Matter in Public Education, and that will be Joya. So if you're interested in how the arts ma matter, please join Joya. Joya's the leader. <laughs> and then we have Ezra Nielsen, who will be presenting on the integration of core subjects in education. Right there is Ezra. There will also be an open discussion session, and that means that the people that join that group will be um, deciding on the agenda in just a few minutes. So if you've got a pressing issue that you want to discuss, if you've got something that um, is not being addressed in the other sessions, uh, that is the time to bring that up. We're also going to ask that um, at the last few minutes of these discussions, before we call everybody back at 2.30, come up with some action items. What can we do as a community on these issues? What can we fight for? Where do you want to see us go next? What do we do next? How do we mobilize? 
those action items are what we're going to report back to the whole group when we come back at, at the end of the discussions. Any questions about that? Sounds good. Awesome. So um, right now we'd like to invite anybody who wants to tell a quick story about their experience with public education, their experience with, as a teacher or a student, or an advocate, a parent, um, any issues that uh, you would like to bring up. We can hand off the mic and um, please take a minute to speak. Hi everyone. Hello. I'm Connie. Hi Connie. And um, I'm here because I've spent my entire career in public school education, over 25 years as a teacher, an administrator, and as a parent. And I'm really, really concerned because there are people in this country that want to take money away from public school education. And it's going to hurt the 99%. And people are not even aware of it. So I'm very concerned. I'm concerned for future generations that education is gonna cost them more and it won't be available. So please uh, join my group and we can talk about the ways that money is already being taken away from the system. But I'm here in support of the 99% and public school education. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I have a slightly different outlook on this. I'm a speech language pathology assistant. I work mostly with developmentally disabled kids. But what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of kids who are not detected until they're in elementary school. And quite frankly, the earlier you start intervention in those zero to five years, especially zero to three, the bigger difference you have on the impact of that child's ability to learn. And uh, if you wait until they're seven, it might be too late. You might not be able to get language into their little heads. You have to start early, and that's going to be the focus of, of, of my discussion. It's going to be the signs that you should see, the things that you should be seeing between zero and five, when you should be seeing them, and warning signs you need to watch out for. My group, What's Money Got to Do With It? How Income Affects Educational Opportunities, is going to we're all going to try and unravel the puzzle about what the pundits say, that our public education is not working. Well, I'm here to tell you our public education is working. It is working. Our teachers know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. If they just weren't bombarded with too many students and the curriculum of the day, the wagon that goes by on that day, then they do teach and our kids do learn, but there are many other factors that our politicians don't want to talk about in terms of our, of our schools failing. And that's what this workshop will talk about, and that is all those other factors that are the cause why our school, some of our schools are failing. So if you'd like to join me for that, I will be right over here. Ezra, you want to talk about your workshop? Uh, a lot of you know me because I've been here since the very beginning of the Occupy movement. I got caught up in the uh, economic draft back in 10 years ago when the war on terror started. And then in the course of that, uh, I got trained as a certified flight instructor. And there's a lot of other teachers in my family. It was only after I had committed myself to going to flight school and training as a helicopter pilot for uh, civilian emergency services that I found out about this movement that had been going on among scientists and educators and philosophers for like 40 years who were trying to integrate all the different fields of study so that instead of learning lots of different subjects at school, everything would all fit into one big subject. We're all out here protesting because we've got this plan in the United States uh, which has started, you know, started with the Constitution and which is, you know, a bunch of ideals about democracy and then we've got a bunch of laws and we all thought that if we obeyed the law we were supposed to get a democracy but the plan is not working and that's what we're protesting. Well, a lot of these, uh, you know, scientists and other people have been saying, you know, mostly to themselves and kind of secret, not trying to, you know, get arrested for terrorism or whatever that uh, 
If we pit the Constitution against the laws of physics, the laws of physics are going to win. So, you know, on the one hand, we've got ideals about democracy, and on the other hand, we've got a plan that isn't working. So, you know, one way or another, uh, a big part of solving that problem is going to depend on education so that people can figure out what exactly went wrong and what we can do about it. Uh, so my teaching, uh, well it's not mine, it's actually all of ours, um, but the teaching on arts education is going to just talk a little bit about um, why arts education should not be um, the lowest priority, but should in fact be one of the highest priorities in public schools. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how, um, not just how the arts empower students and develop, help them develop creativity, but also how it can help them with those other core subjects. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the arts and democracy have to do with each other. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. All right, um, most of you know me. My name is Samuel Taylor. Uh, also, if you guys know me, you know that I work for Phoenix Union High School District. Right now, I work over at Cesar Chavez High School. I'm a computer lab assistant in the library. I'm probably one of the people that deals with the most students ever because I have to deal with every single um, student that comes in the library. Before that, I was working over at Calabac High School. We need to work on ending the cuts in education right now because in 2010, I actually ended up getting cut from Calabac High School because of the cuts. Last, uh, at the end of the last school year, we ended up cutting like 60 teachers in the entire school district. That is way too many. We need these teachers to be able to teach these kids and not have like 40 plus kids in these classrooms. So I hope that's some of the things that you guys will talk about today with the cuts in education. I'm living proof of that. Luckily, I ended up getting hired back with the district, and I love working with my kids. They're all my kids, and I make sure that they know about all of these issues that are going on in the government. They know about Occupy Phoenix. A couple of them have actually been down here, so keep up the good work, guys. All right, my name's Alejandrina Franco. I go by Nina. Um, I'm a third year student at ASU. Uh, I am majoring in elementary education, diversity, and language and learning. So I'll be a dual language teacher, hopefully, by the end of uh, May 2013. I am also president uh, and uh, chapter leader of an organization called Students for Education Reform at ASU. Um, this organization is a group of students coming together and discussing these issues about education. And um, we're fighting towards ending educational inequality here in the United States. And hopefully, well, we're going to start, start out small. We're going to focus on Arizona issues. Uh, how can we end educational inequality here in, the, here in Arizona? Um, one of the topics that I hope to discuss in Michael's group is um, the attack on ethnic studies. Right on. Right on. Also, another topic that is not very, very much discussed, and I believe it's ignored because they believe it's an immigration issue, is the DREAM Act. We have a lot of undocumented students here in, in the state of Arizona, and we think that the solution is to kick them out. We need these students here. They're a valuable resource to this country. Let's give them an, an opportunity to get on the path to citizenship and actually help change America, the United States. This is a great land. It was a land founded by immigrants. Why not keep them here? Why push them away? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, some of you know me, I'm Lauren. Um, I'm a member of the Occupy Media team. Uh, and when we first started talking about Occupy Education, I was incredibly excited because I am a teacher. Um, and then we started uh, talking about topics and people started asking if I wanted to do a teach-in. And as we talked, I realized that I have a very different experience than a lot of people. And in a lot of ways, I'm the uh, perhaps symbol right now of the problematic alternative. I teach at a private school and I teach at a religious school and I love my job and I love my school. What I don't love about it is that there are not many other options for students, especially in Arizona, in this area, um, when it comes to trying to find really uh, well-funded education. Because it's really the case that we have some of the lowest ranked public education uh, test results in the country. And America ranks horribly 
uh, internationally when it comes to education. So Arizona is in a really awful place and parents are searching for answers to try and find their kids a place with good education. And some of them are lucky enough to be in districts with strong public education and some aren't. And the ones that aren't have a tendency to come uh, to private education on scholarship or otherwise. And part of my job besides teaching ends up being uh, doing interviews and finding out, like, basic, uh, interviewing uh, kids who want to come to the school. Um, and what breaks my heart is the fact that there are so many students and so many families who just want a good education for their kids and they have no idea where to turn and we can't take everybody and we shouldn't take everybody because schools need better funding across the board. And so with, and it's, it really, uh, is striking to me how long that list gets on the days that I do um, school interviews. I go to about till nine o'clock at night um, interviewing. So um, I just wanted to uh, say that and just uh, lend my, my two cents. So, thanks.